And again, uh, viewers, you uh, play a part in our program here. Before we uh, open up our telephone lines, though, Greg, we want to address a few more crops. Maybe our viewers uh, would be calling in about these questions here. It relates to forage. We get, it seems like we get a lot of forage questions sometimes when Agritain is with us. And the other is cotton. We have some guests right. on both of those. Yeah, we have two, two more clips to look at. Um, both of the researchers are from University of Georgia. The first one we're going to look at is Dr. Glenn Harris. Mm -hmm. He does some cotton research and also talks about uh, some research that his colleague Dennis Hancock had collected in forages. And then after that, we're going to uh, watch a short clip from Dennis Hancock himself talking about um, measurements that he's made on nitrogen volatilization losses with and without agartane treated urea. Very good. So alfalfa and cotton, let's go to uh, hear from Glenn Harris and uh, Dennis Hancock, both from the University of Georgia. Agartane has definitely been the product that, that has been consistent across the board and really shows the best urease inhibition. Um, I have some slides to show that. I had uh, three years or uh, three locations for cotton in that first trial that you just saw. And, and here, what you got to remember is that the, the shorter the bar, the better the product works because that means the nitrogen didn't volatilize to get in uh, that trap. Uh, okay. So the first bar you see is the untreated urea. The second bar is, a, is an imitator product that also claims urease and inhibition. But that third bar, as you see, that low one is, is the agartane. So it shows it definitely held back the uh, volatilization. In fact, the last one is just the background or control, the little bit of nitrogen that comes out naturally. Mm -hmm. And volatilization, uh, again, is so important uh, in, in all crops. Uh, but when you're in, again, going back to weather and soil, I would think that uh, in cotton, it's, it, it's got to be right up there to one of the main concerns for growers. Yeah, again, nitrogen uh, nitrogen's key to cotton as it is to corn and forages too, and uh, that gets you most out of your efficiency. We need to get every, you know, every bit out of we can out of that fertilizer, and this is where agritane comes. Uh, uh, what you see here is we have two locations in Georgia, and these are both in North Georgia, uh, Eatonton and Calhoun, and you'll notice right away there's a difference in the yield. This is, a, this is Russell Bermuda grass, and this is a four, year, uh, four cuttings. This is for hay, not pasture. I would expect uh, good results on pasture also, uh, but this is a, a hay study, and you see a little difference uh, that the Calhoun is, is obviously a better soil, has a better yield potential for this Bermuda grass. Uh, but what you notice again, uh, untreated urea on the left, agritane in the middle, and an imitator on the right, and at both locations the, 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 where you had agritane, you made more yield, and especially in that, in that high producing uh, location with the, with the better soil. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that uh, the second and third cuttings, uh, before we get to this, here's another new new uh, slide here, but yeah, that uh, was I would imagine that those later cuttings, you might see a uh, real payoff there with uh, more productivity. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, you know, it's important uh, on, on any, all cuttings. We try to get four cuttings a year, it depends on the rain. Uh, we can even get five in a good year, but uh, these were four cuttings and uh, very important to yield. So let's go back to this to uh, Dr. Hancock's study here. This is another one here. Yeah, this is just uh, that first year. Uh, first slide was 2008. This is uh, the 2009 okay, data. Good. You can just see. Actually, uh, well, obviously, it was a little better yield. Conditions were better overall. In both locations, the yield is better, but the same, the same results with the, with the agartane uh, improving yield. On the, on the immunograph. We talked about the volatilization uh, for cotton and, and rice and corn as well. And volatilization, is that, play a, is that a factor in, in, in forages? We talk about grasses? Yeah, for sure. Um, like I said, you can't incorporate it uh, with tillage and uh, we don't have a lot of irrigation, so you got to rely on rain. And, you know, we get fit about 50 inches of uh, rain a year in, in Georgia, but it's not real evenly distributed a lot <laughs> yeah, of times. I don't know where, where so, it would be. But <laughs> yeah, and, and when, a lot of times when you want it, it doesn't come. We've had some pretty dry years over the years in the middle of the summer. So, uh, uh, you know, no matter how good you think your weatherman is, you just never know. We want to give you a chance to share information here about your research and if you could do that and uh, some of the things you have found as it relates to our whole discussion of weather and volatility and, and agritain. Yeah, well, we certainly have a lot of weather variability that, uh, as we mentioned earlier, that we're having to deal with and our, our farmers really need ways to reduce their risk as much as possible. One of the things that we've been looking at is in a Bermuda grass hayfield setting, uh, testing some of these products. Uh, using some of the chambers that we talked about earlier, uh, ways to actually quantify that volatilization that's going on. Uh, we've got some data here that actually shows uh, some volatilization loss from uh, uh, an average here presented over two locations, um, Calhoun, which is in the northwest corner, and Eatonton, which is in the central part of Georgia. Uh, two years here, and you can see that although the quantity was different in the two years, the trend was basically the same. We lost uh, quite a bit from urea. 
uh, and one of the imitators. And then from the other, uh, uh, the other two there that we included, one was agartane and one was a polymer coated uh, urea. And uh, the trend held in, in both of those two years and in the other uh, uh, experiments that we've looked at as well. And that translated fairly well to yield. Now the volatilization data was just over one cutting or one application of the uh, fertilizer, but uh, the yield is where the story is really told. And as it turned out, we did end up getting a, a significant response and yield uh, from agritain there. And uh, really, uh, in both years, although the, again, the quantity is different, but in both years, the, uh, uh, the trend held between the two. Mm -hmm. If we you know, step back from that and really look at the economics behind it, and, and you know, was that response good enough to um, warrant the use of this? And we've done, gone through some preliminary economic analysis on that and really looking at um, the, the break even on that and how we could actually integrate that. And, and we feel pretty confident in that at the current prices, and particularly the current prices of the product, but also the prices of, of uh, fertilizer, that uh, we are in an economical response uh, situation where it definitely would pay producers to use this on a routine basis. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we are now officially recommending at the University of Georgia to, um, uh, to use this in those situations where we feel that volatilization risk is, is high. And uh, watching comments from uh, Glenn Harris and Dr. Dennis Hancock uh, recorded earlier here on RFD TV Live. We have our telephone number up and this is where we invite you to join us. You're in a very important part of all of our RFD TV Live programs. No matter where you, where you farm and uh, what your crop is, uh, questions for Greg or Martin here, we open up our telephone lines. Toll free 877-731-6733. Like to hear from you, no matter what your crop is, if you couldn't make it to commodity classic. Well, here's your one-on-one uh, -on -one time with these two gentlemen tonight here on RFD TV Live. 877-731-6733. Telephone lines open now. Hope to hear from you. And uh, let's go to the uh, uh, the videos we just saw there the, uh, from uh, the, talking about cotton and forage. Martin, over to you and, on the cotton side of things, and uh, so just some overviews that you have. There. Well, I just saw that. I'm not a cotton expert. Being from Illinois, we <laughs> don't have too much, but it's certainly evident that in a nitrogen-loving crop like uh, you know cotton, that when you can stabilize the nitrogen against the volatility losses, that it shows up dramatically in yield. And on the forage side, we get, like we said, a lot of questions on that. Uh, Greg, what about? Yeah, both of those clips were really good at, at showing how nitrogen loss translates to yield loss. And so I think a lot of times as a company, we spend a lot of time talking about volatilization loss, and we don't really drive home the fact that when you lose nitrogen, often you lose yield. And so both of those um, clips really did a good job of showing exactly how much yield you really lost in, in forages and in cotton. Okay, all right. No matter, again, what your crop, we have talked a lot of things here tonight. We come back, we'll get to your telephone calls. Put up our toll-free number before we go to our next break. 877-731-6733. We've covered a lot of ground. You've seen videos here dating back earlier this year and into fall here. So if you have a question, don't wait too long. We want to make sure we get your question answered here. That's the planning season coming up here right around the corner. So let's get on the telephones and join us here on RFD TV Live. We're going to take our last break and come back and take your telephone calls. Talk more with Greg and Martin as well. You're watching RFD TV Live with Agri and Coke Agronomic Services here on RFD-TV, Rural America's most important network. Stay with us. <laughs> 